Well, just been for a walk, back in now and uh, back on with the plant learning. Uh, so much to learn and it's so important that you, you know your plants and uh, you're not going to know it all because there's going to be that little old lady uh, on that project one day that you're going to go along and they're going to tell you everything you need to know about plants and uh, it's a big old world, the plant world, but we still got to keep learning every day. It's so important. Um, 2004, I went to college and started to learn about garden design and plants a little bit more, more in depth. But there is so much to learn about them. But I'm on a quest. I'm going to learn about these plants and uh, have a look in this video and see what I'm learning. So learn with me. Oh, I've got to be quiet now because I don't want to wake up the neighbours. It's uh, Sunday morning. So this is what we call, well, not what I call, but this is a Sangu Sorba, which is the lilac squirrel. Let's have a look now. Make sure I got the name right. There we go. Sanguisorba acusinensis. So the sinensis is from the Orient, obviously. Um, and this is the, the uh, lilac squirrel. So just got to be a bit quiet now because it is still early on a Sunday morning, about half past seven. So I think I found the right spot for it, but we can always move it. So this herbaceous perennial, look at it, beautiful leaf on it. Well, I've got this Sambuca, this black lace here, which will probably be too big for this area eventually, so I'll have to move it. But I've got this little area here where I've got this box hedging coming around, and uh, just want to fill it up a little bit because I've got to sort of try and cover those mantles. Like I said, I need access to them, so I'm going to put this polymonium probably next to here. So if I put that there now, you can actually see. Oi, 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 oi! Sorry about the dogs but I've got to put something in here that's going to sort of conceal the manholes. Um, they're horrible, aren't they? But we need them. What's your thoughts? Well, this is the Polymonium Heaven Scent. Uh, small perennial. has purple foliage and uh, purpley blue flowers that come out. That's what it says on the label. I don't know much about this plant. And... Uh, the worst thing I, I've ever done is not get the plants in the ground. So this will this will be uh, okay in full sun, par partial shade, which we've got here, and uh, we've got a bit of shade overhead there. So I think it'll be perfect just down here because it will start to, you know, conceal these manholes a little bit, which I do need access to occasionally. Well, if you look at the soil here, the soil here is good and uh, you can see how well the uh, the box is looking. So I think this poly polymonium will do well here. Um, it'll have, like I said, the purple foliage and like a purpley blue flower on it. So I think it will fill that space up quite nicely. It says that the height of it, let's have a look now, the height and the spread. Um, I need my glasses here, but it says... Uh, 225 centimeters uh, in height which is 10 inches and 440 centimeters so 400 mil spread so I think that would fill that little spot up in this corner here perfectly and it'll be a bit of a contrast to the hedge as long as the hedge doesn't the box hedge doesn't grow into it I suppose well here it is I've got out the pot you can see it was getting a little bit pot bound so we're gonna to have to sort of tease these roots out here break the, this will stimulate the growth and uh, get it to spread out just be carefully I'm trying to film this here now so just break those up a little bit look at that so that's a healthy plant really oh look at that there I'm gonna keep all the labels with these plants now because I need to identify them because I don't always remember them. The plant world is so big. So I think, like I said, I know what your thoughts are. This isn't going to affect the manholes in any way, um, but that will be perfect there with the spread of it. Just cover the edges of those manholes. And as long as I know where they are, I can get them out quite easily if I have to in an emergency. So I think that's going to look good. 
it's um, great learning about plants again. So we've got the foxglove over there that will get a, some height on it and sort of come up above this euonymus over here. And uh, that was the erysium I put in yesterday. And here we have some granny bonnets coming up here. Nice, beautiful blue flower. And but what we've got here is um, the um, the oryngium, the sea holly here. So that's the thistle on it. So I probably need to bring that forward a little bit because it's getting underneath this box ball, this pom pom, this ligustrum. Because as this ligustrum has recovered, it's um, it's just getting that little bit wider and it's, it's going to overtake this. So I may have to just sort of bring this forward over here a little bit. But it's coming. Well, this is the one originally here, the Sioli, which is perfectly in sh perfect in shape just underneath this catalpa tree here. But I've been trying to get this one over a little bit and I just feel as if I'm going to damage it now. Um, I'll have to do that later on in the year. And uh, just leave it because otherwise I'm just going to damage it. See the what? What this is what we planted yesterday. This is a, a salvia I just put in there. I could do with a few more in there to be honest, or maybe that would be all right. Maybe a couple more. And uh, I've got a G in there as well. So that bluey flower and that uh, pink flush there of that GM is going to look good. Hopefully, they're in the ground now. Let's just see how they perform. Showed this uh, border um, quite a few times, but you can see the granny's bonnet, the aquilegias, beautiful flower. Looking for the sun, There's a little pink one there behind, and uh, and there we've got an hydrangea. But hopefully that's right, and we've got some rampant mint taken off there, so we'll have to probably reduce that a little bit. But it's that little dark corner there where that poor little grass isn't doing so well. We have to do something about. Well, this is a, a verbena. Uh, a fishnalis uh, Bampton and uh, I'll get a better metre at all but I'm thinking maybe maybe because of that man over there I've got to tidy all this up but maybe if I put this as a backdrop there it's a good contrast in foliage as well so um, I give it a little bit of height Well, there you are. Um, Alison isn't keen on the verbena, uh, that's not the Bonarensis, uh, officinalis that one is, and uh, it does south seed, but I think the purple foliage here is absolutely perfect against the box ball here, so um, yes, yeah, <laughs> she doesn't know about that now, so, uh, but the label's in there, so I know where we are, what it is, and uh, it's so good learning about, make sure that label's up there now, so look, good learning about plants again. Um, it's quite daunting really when you see all those long Latin names, but you know, the results of plants, let's hopefully, hope hopefully that these are in the right place. Well, let's have a run through the plants that we actually got here. Um, okay, we've got this uh, box edge uh, growing quite nice now. Uh, I'll give that a little clip soon. And we've got these uh, topiary style spirals. And over here is the black lace. Uh, absolutely beautiful hopefully it's going to conceal these manos as i've said we've got a verbena there which will, will south seed real purple foliage on there that will come which will be a good contrast here and there's a polymonium here a little ground cover not a ground cover plant that's going to have a little bit of height on it but the foliage on there that'll have little flowers as well you can just as i said you can just see them starting to come through there so little purpley blue flowers over here we have the um Sangu Sangu Sorba. I did have to check the label out there. It's, I just can't remember all these plants. And we've got a few little strawberry plants that I put in here way back. Uh, they still coming through. And we've got Foxlove Digitalis. Over here we've got a, a variegated uh, Euonymus. And you've got to make sure you, with the Euonymus like this, where you see where it's greening, that means it's maybe not quite 100% happy so you have to remove that I've done it once or twice and the variegation came back so got to get rid of that because it's reverting we've got an erysium there give it a little sort of purpley flush here in this garden then we've got an aquilegia with a blue flower on here and as I said there's this eryngium that uh, I don't know I managed to get under that uh, this ligustrum this is a triple-ed 
Ligustrum and um, I think it's grown now and obviously it's pushed in there and I, I've tried to move it forward but I'm just going to compromise the plant which I don't want to do. Um, again I can't remember what this one's called I just planted it and that's the thing about it. So this is a Veronica Inspire Blue, there we are. So this is the way to try and remember your plants, keep your labels down in there. Again we've got this uh, box here as a, as a pyramid and I want to show you on the side here because it's just died off on the side there a little bit. There's a bit more growth coming through there now, but I've got a few that have gone like that. Um, if you've got any tips on that, I'd be interested to know what your thoughts and your opinions on that. So we've got a spirea over here. We've had this for some years. A bit of new growth coming through there now. Again, we've got a, another black lace over there, which lo looks absolutely beautiful uh, against the green of the spirea. We've got a hydrangea and uh, we've got a geranium small dicentra and again we've got this Eryngium which is working perfectly here in this space and way above it is this Catalpa so this is the Indian bean tree and uh, I've had this for some time now but you can see it's quite a mature tree now it's grown really well we've got a Berberis in the background there and then we have just here this is a Thalic... I can't say it... Thalictrum Thalictrum. There we are. So let's just read what it says about Thalictrum. I do sort of know these, but I can never pronounce it. Thalictrum black stocking, a new variety of meadow. Um, this has a lavender purple flowers, held high on striking jet black stems. I need my glasses. Uh, lacy foliage, two meters in height. So this is going to sort of get up maybe about the same as the Berberis there, like you know. So you know this this border probably needs redoing. But unfortunately, due to lockdown, we can't get out and about. So this is what we have to do. So we've got a couple of the stilbies here, which has been driven over by my son at some point. <laughs> and uh, again, we've got a little little Delphinium growing there. This is a, a Brennera. I always know the Brennera. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the flowers on that. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> Sorry about that. Then we have another Astilby there. And uh, it's, see how the foliage is coming into the Brennera. So that's working perfectly. Blinking dogs. Then the Delphiniums again, which are growing nicely. Uh, somebody commented the other day that the Dicentra was really clashing in this area here. But... You know, I think in design you need some contrast sometimes. Um, some people see it as aureus and some people see it as yellow, but I think it works. Got a peony at the back there and a small euphorbia there. Not quite sure if that's working so well there. And then we've got a, a lupin. And uh, again, we've got this uh, triple-ed ligustrum here, the pom-pom. And this is, I think I'm going to have to move at some point. This is a, an hibiscus and uh, it probably is not doing so well there. That's going to have to be moved. That's been there for some time. But the border's coming on. Uh, the garden centres have reopened now. So you can actually go and get some plants. But my plants come from Proctor's Nursery in uh, Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, get a line and uh, have a look. And uh, have a look at their plants. Great service. And you can speak to Dan up there. Dan Dawson, but oh yeah, and at the back we've got an aconitum sort of growing, and they have like a mauvey flower, so they're going to get quite tall as well. They get about two meters, I think. So there you go, learning about plants. It's going to rain later on, but I'm just sort of give these a little bit of a watering, give them a bit of soaking in.